Hey guys, it's Mr. Schmidt here, and in this video, we're going to talk about the socially efficient market. So in other words, we're going to talk about a market that's producing the level of output that is most desired by society. But in order to do this, I have a lot of vocabulary I want to go over with you first. So let's start with this idea of marginal private benefit. So we've encountered this word marginal repeatedly throughout the course, and it is impossible to do well on the AP microeconomics exam without fully understanding this word marginal. So remember, marginal here means additional, right? So it's the, in this case, marginal private benefit, which really is what we've been referring to as marginal benefit all along, is the additional benefit to individual consumers from consuming an additional unit of output. So what benefit, we've measured that with utility in the past, do I gain as an individual consumer if I consume or use one additional unit of output? And marginal private benefit always equals demand. In fact, the demand curve is marginal benefit. It's a representation of consumers' desire for that good, right? And at a lower price, marginal benefit or more consumers um, are going to want to consume uh, that product. So marginal private benefit would be a downward sloping curve and it's equal to demand, always, always, always very very important uh, phrase there the counter to marginal private benefit is marginal private cost and so it's the additional cost to individual firms from producing an additional unit of output and so marginal private cost is what we've been referring to as marginal cost in the past it's always equal to supply remember back in unit six when we did the perfectly competitive firms uh, supply curve and we said that's marginal cost uh, effectively, that's what we were talking about. So it's the cost of firms if they produce one more unit of output. So really just different phrasing for terms that we've already encountered in past units. What is really new here is this idea of marginal social benefit. So marginal social benefit says, okay, I've got my marginal private benefit that's the benefit to those individual consumers, right? And we would expect them, right, to get a benefit from consuming the product, right? Like if I go to the store and I buy a candy bar, you would expect me to enjoy the candy bar. The marginal social benefit also adds in external benefits to those not producing or consuming the additional unit of output. In other words, it would factor in people's benefit from me consuming the candy bar, right? So for example, if, uh, you know, when I was a little kid, if I was uh, consuming the, the candy bar and I did it in a really cute way and my mom got uh, a lot of joy out of that, that would be an external benefit. And so it is actually socially desirable for marginal private benefit to equal marginal social benefit. In other words, we're saying there should be no external benefits. Economists want the people who are benefiting from the action to be the only ones benefiting from the action. And you may wonder, well, why is that? Because the example I gave with my mom really doesn't make any sense, right? Like, why can't she enjoy it? But as an example, consider vaccines, right? So for example, if someone gets a, a flu shot, right? If someone gets a flu shot, they're protected, but also the people around them are protected, right? And so the problem with that is other people may say, I don't need to get a flu shot because the people around me are getting flu shots. And so that's not very efficient, right? In order to really protect everybody from the flu, we need everyone getting flu shots. And so there's external benefits to those not getting the flu shots. And so it's not socially desirable. So the point is we want marginal social benefit to be exactly the same as marginal private benefit. So the only people benefiting from doing something are those that are doing it, all right? So that's marginal social benefit. And then of course the counter is marginal social cost. So marginal social cost is marginal private cost, the cost of firms of producing the next unit, plus external cost to those not producing or consuming the additional unit of output. And once again, it is socially desirable for MPC to equal MSC. So there's no external cost. In other words, the firm is the only one paying cost to produce the product. A classic example here is pollution, right? So for example, if a firm is producing output and that's causing pollution, well, that pollution is uh, an external cost, right? It, it makes it hard for others to breathe. 
Um, it can make it hard maybe to see on the roads if there's a lot, a lot of smog or in the cities. Some major cities have those issues. And so it's not socially desirable. And so we want that firm to internalize those costs and be the only one paying the cost. We don't want others paying those external costs from the firm producing um, that uh, the product in, inside their factories. So that's marginal social cost. The level of output that is produced by the free market where marginal private benefit equals marginal private cost, because remember, uh, free market, in other words for that, is the private market. Uh, there we go. Uh, that is the free market level of output, MPB equals MPC. And so this is the level of output that the market's going to produce. Now, it may or may not be the socially efficient or allocatively efficient, it's another name for that, level of output, but it is the output that is going to be produced by society, by, sorry, by the free market, gotta be careful there. And so that's the, that's the equilibrium quantity we were doing way back in unit two. So back in unit two, when we would do this and we would say, okay, QP, demand, supply, and then down here was the equilibrium quantity. Well, that equilibrium quantity is the free market output. I just, we just never really talked about is it socially efficient or not because the socially optimal or socially efficient or allocatively efficient, a lot of words for the same thing, level of output is the level of output most desired by society. In other words, the optimal amount, right? So our marginal social benefit equals marginal social cost. Where those two intersect is the socially optimal output. Of course, if MSB is also MPB and MSC is also MPC, marginal private benefit, marginal private cost, then the socially optimal output will be the free market output that's actually being produced. So in short, the socially optimal output is what we want to be produced. The free market output is what's actually being produced and we want them to be the same thing. But as we'll see in later videos, because of external costs and benefits, they aren't often the same thing. And so there's inefficiency that results from that. So finally, let's go ahead and graph the socially efficient level of output to wrap up this video. So again, we have quantity and price. This is going to look very much like what we were drawing way back in unit two with supply and demand. So just like that. And then what we're going to do here is, remember, we're going to say that demand is marginal private benefit. Remember, it's, demand is always going to equal marginal private benefit because it's always going to be what's actually being produced. And supply is or what's being demanded, I should say. And supply is always going to be marginal private cost. It's always going to be what's actually being supplied. So if we, if we uh, look at where the – sorry about that. If we look at where they are intersecting – and we come down, this QF here, QF is going to be the free market quantity. We can go ahead and like put a little label here and just say this is the free market. So QF is the free market quantity. It's where MPB and MPC intersect. Now, the question is, well, is, it, is this a socially efficient market? Well, we don't know because we don't know where MSC and MSB are. Now, if I go ahead and tell you that demand is also MSB, and supply is also MSC, then yes, this is a socially efficient market because where, because where MSC and MSB intersect is also where the free market intersects. So what's being produced is actually what is desired by society. And so QF is going to equal QS, and we'll say QS is the socially optimal level of output. So in short, really what this, this section of the unit with ex, uh, what we're going to call externalities in the next two videos comes down to is making sure we understand the difference between the free market output where marginal private cost intersects marginal private benefit, what's actually being produced, that a difference between that, if there is any, and marginal social costs intersecting marginal social benefit, which is the socially optimal level of output what we actually want to produce, what society wants, what's allocatively efficient. So that's all for this video on the socially efficient market. Until next time, have a great day.